Hello, in this video we will examine glenohumeral joint arthrokinematics. Glenohumeral joint possesses three degrees of freedom, meaning it moves in all three cardinal planes. It moves in the sagittal plane for flexion and extension, the frontal plane for abduction and adduction, and the transverse plane for internal and external rotation. Let's examine the sagittal plane first. Here, humerus spins on top of the glenoid. With flexion, humerus spins posterior. Observe the greater tubercle moves posterior. With extension, humerus spins anterior. Observe the greater tubercle move anterior. Now, the frontal plane. During glenohumeral abduction, humerus rolls superior and glides inferior. During glenohumeral adduction, humerus rolls inferior and glides superior. And last but not least, the transverse plane. During glenohumeral internal rotation, humerus rolls anterior and glides posterior. During glenohumeral external rotation, humerus rolls posterior and glides anterior. Now, let's examine a clinical scenario to which we can apply the arthrokinematics we just learned. Sally is a 24-year-old college student complaining of a left shoulder pain since about three months ago without any mechanism of injury. All range of motion was found to be within normal limits, except abduction was limited to 150 degrees and external rotation was limited to 50 degrees. Question. Which direction would you mobilize the humerus? One, if you wanted to regain abduction range of motion. And two, if you wanted to regain external rotation range of motion. Okay, let's answer this. Remember, you always mobilize in the direction of the joint's glide. So, if you wanted to regain abduction movement, you need to mobilize humerus inferior. If you wanted to regain external rotation movement, you need to mobilize the humerus anterior. Here's Sally. She's doing so much better thanks to you. She has finally regained her full range of motion. I hope this video was helpful. If it was, give it a like and subscribe.